So what's worked well in providing remote education for children and young people with SEND? Curriculum content, the important decisions leaders make about what children and young people need to learn, continues to be important. As always, the curriculum they experience should be planned and sequenced so that new knowledge and skills build on what has been taught before, as well as towards clearly defined endpoints. This is particularly important for children and young people with SEND, especially in the current context where there are likely to be fewer opportunities for learning with a teacher in a classroom. We found that some providers have offered as close to their usual curriculum as possible. Other providers have focused much more on the social and emotional aspects of learning, or what they've described as a recovery curriculum, with a focus on teaching well-being, fitness and life skills. Careful selection and sequencing of curriculum content when education has been disrupted means really focusing on the most important things for children and young people with SEND to learn, as well as what is the best way to teach this content so that children and young people can remember and use the knowledge they're acquiring confidently and well. We've seen that in some cases, remote education has provided opportunities for children and young people to work on specific objectives and targets in their EHC and SEND support plans. Learning at home and in the local community can help pupils to transfer and generalise important knowledge and skills in meaningful and functional ways. Children and young people with SEND have benefited from being taught the code of online learning that helps them with engaging and interacting online, being able to put their virtual hand up, to mute and unmute, and to contribute to virtual lessons can be the difference between being a passive recipient and an active participant. Attending doesn't mean engaging, and engaging doesn't necessarily lead to learning. Next, we'll look at how teaching practices have been adapted for children and young people with SEND during the pandemic. So how are teaching practices being adapted? We found that children and young people with SEND can really benefit from structure and routine. During the pandemic, some with autism had settled well into the routine of learning at home because the school had set up a tight timetable of lessons and they liked the routine and familiarity. Shorter, more frequent lessons, which organised learning in bite-sized chunks, seem to work well for some children and young people with SEND. This allows them to revisit content, for example, by watching sequences again. Follow up one to one sessions with teachers or teaching assistants can then be used to pick up on topics that they found more difficult to learn. Some children and young people with SEND have been accessing pre recorded lessons or work packs. This has allowed them to learn at their own pace and, in some cases, revisit the learning, then contact the teacher separately to ask questions. Leaders referred to curricular materials being adapted for children and young people with SEND with some teachers uh, making telephone calls to the child or young person or their parents to give information and guidance about the learning activities. Clear guidance about the intended learning and what the child or young person has to do is important so that the adult can support their child's learning when they're being educated remotely. The role of support staff. The availability of teaching assistants, TAs, or learning support assistants to support learning activities has also had a significant impact on remote education for children and young people with SEND. In many cases, TAs have maintained their supporting role during the pandemic. For example, some pupils within EHCP had been allocated a TA as a key worker who called the child or young person every day to check they were able to access the work and to provide support. TAs have been providing support in a range of ways, on a one-to-one -one basis, in breakout rooms, or in managing the chat in online lessons. Support staff have also played a role in organising social activities, such as virtual music clubs or supported social calls on Zoom. Frequent dialogue between, with parents and carers, as well as with children and young people with SEND during this time is vitally important. And support staff have played a crucial role in this ongoing communication with pupils' homes. They've provided a point of contact for the children and young people to send via email, phone calls or instant messaging. So let's think about assessment and this important question, 
Has the curriculum been taught? Our definition of progress is knowing more, remembering more and being able to do more. Identifying the most crucial curriculum content children and young people need to learn has to be the first and most important step. This is because it's the knowledge of this content which should be assessed. Without determining what should be learnt, it's difficult to know whether or not the teaching of it is successful. We know that it's important to assess what pupils are learning, so how is assessment working? Many providers described assessment as a work in progress. Feedback and assessment are especially important for children and young people with SEND. This is harder when they're learning remotely. And we found that some schools were assessing what has or hasn't been done rather than what children and young people have learnt. In mainstream schools, low stakes assessments have been used like quizzes, multiple choice questions or chat boxes and polls. And these activities can give a basic indication of what children and young people have learnt. Providers have found one-to-one -one conversations with the child or young person and their parent or carer a useful tool for assessing progress. Where outcomes or targets from learning and support plans for individuals have been shared with parents, some schools have discussed ways that parents can carry out activities and share evidence of progress towards these. This includes giving ideas of how this could be done, such as photographs or videos and support to do this. 